one of the things uh, that we've observed about the way the magazine works and some of its properties are uh, certainly just in its physicality that the covers are very kind of they can be seen almost as a badge or they can be seen on tables and indeed they can quite often go on to become quite emblematic and quite iconic we can remember some covers as far back as say the 60s it's really easy when we think about the way that information has been abstracted and channels have been broken down the way we expect to receive information now is diversely available across all sorts of devices and channels. But it's, uh, it's easy to forget the importance of the, the physical context of, of, of consuming news and, and magazines. And the huge numbers of people still consume uh, information in those formats. This is uh, a kind of average kind of lead spread for a, a large article. And you can see we've got large pictures, big titles, subheaders, pull quotes the big shiny stuff that attracts us to the page. And then we've also got uh, a, a lead paragraph, which leads us into the reading experience, the deeper stuff, and then the basic content, plus all the bits of kind of page furniture and uh, metadata that, that tends to float about. There's also some smaller images with captions that work in line with the, the, nar the article narrative. Here we've, uh, we've chosen to, uh, to lay out the page elements that we find in magazines uh, vertically. Uh, we find that the, the metaphorical, graphical, page-turning metaphors that you see quite frequently in web-based e-magazine readers uh, are not terribly believable to us, and they don't feel very honest to the form of the screen. And if we look to successful digital reading experiences like email or blogs or the web more broadly or uh, iPhone applications like Instapaper, it feels much, more, much clearer that scrolling systems would be, uh, is, is more appropriate for what we're dealing with. But to give you a sense of the geography of, of the layout of the magazine, each article, as we said, is vertical, and articles sit next to each other horizontally. Uh, as the reader wants to move across the articles, they just swipe simply left and right, which spans the kind of table of contents, if you like, of the, of the magazine across those spreads at the top. And when they want to read into the article or drill down into it, they move up and down. And if they want to move on again, they swipe left and right. We were keen to develop two kind of reading mechanics embedded inside the same view of the content. One which was about the core focus of reading, which can include inline specific images, and one which was more of the impactful, dramatic, rich, uh, imagery-based reading experiences that we find in magazines. And essentially we switch between the two very, very effortlessly, just by touching on each side of the screen. This simply shifts the focus of the view between the, the, vertical cont uh, the vertical text or the stacked images. One of the things uh, that we've observed about the way the magazine works and some of its properties, something that emerged in the research that was really interesting was that they can be completed, that they're very knowable that one can read through it and finish it and have a sense that, that they've consumed an editorial package uh, without necessarily the kind of endless, infinitely expanding RSS feed, for example, where there really is no end. So the reader can orient themselves uh, inside uh, the magazine. Uh, we have this uh, very light-footed sort of head-up overlay, which just shows how much material is, uh, is they've been through uh, in the magazine that's before them and how much is yet to come. Critically, there's no um, <clears throat> change in the layout uh, with the different orientations of the device. We didn't want to make a distinction between, say, the spread image reading experience and the 
the reading, deeper reading experience. Each of the orientations suits one of the mechanisms better than the other, but we don't want to impose that on the, on the reader. So if you position it in this, in this, in the vertical position, it's better for uh, text reading. And if you position it horizontally, if you turn it horizontally, it suits uh, uh, landscape images. But there's no forced, there's no forced UI change there. Obviously, we don't want to interrupt the core reading experience. I'm very keen to make sure the UI doesn't get in the way of the materials. There aren't, it's not covered in buttons. But, you know, there are certain functions like search or save for later, bookmarking, etc., which are really important. So uh, we've had to think about ways that you can call up uh, simple functions uh, inside the UI. Reader rubs the device to, 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 to heat up the content. When the content in the magazine is in this heated mode, uh, we can act on any of the atoms uh, simply by touching them. And this, this throws up this radial menu uh, with the uh, contextually appropriate options uh, to cut out or send to a friend uh, or you know, to draw in material from the web, whatever's, whatever's appropriate for that, for that particular piece of content. We've moved on to look at some of the ways that the device might occupy the world, especially since that's so important for magazines. Uh, what happens when it's put down and left in an idle state, how the spine might behave. It manages to strike a, a very capable balance between very luxurious, impactful, dramatic imagery, um, large photographs, inviting, engaging images and also sort of richer, deeper reading experiences where you may be able to lose yourself in an article or much more kind of a much chewier piece of content.